Are you ready to uncover one of the biggest engineering marvels in history? Join me as we explore China's massive 10 billion canal project, also known as Pinglu Canal, and discover how it's transforming the landscape and economy of the region. Welcome to the Seeker's Edge, where we seek knowledge that'll give you an edge in life. To give you some background information, Pinglu Canal is a massive waterway project that's being constructed in China's eastern province of Shandong. The canal will span a length of approximately 1,000 kilometers and will connect the Yellow River with the Yangtze River, two of the most important waterways in China. The project was initiated in 2022 and is planned to be completed by 2026, with an estimated cost of around 21 billion US dollars. This ambitious undertaking will require massive amounts of resources, including equipment, materials, and labor. So why is China investing so much in this project? What are the reasons behind the construction of the Pinglu Canal? This is the central question that we're going to be exploring in this video. We're going to be examining the strategic significance of the canal for China's economic development, water resource management, and geopolitical interests. So stay tuned and let's dive deeper into the Pinglu Canal project and what it means for China's future. The Pinglu Canal project is a significant development initiative that aims to divert water from the Yangtze River to the arid regions of northwestern China. The idea of building a canal in this region dates back to almost 100 years ago. However, it wasn't until recently that the project began to take shape. In 2012, the Chinese government announced the North-South Water Diversion Project, which aimed to transfer water from the water-rich South to the water-scarce North. The South to North Water Diversion Project in China is the largest of its kind ever undertaken. The project involves drawing water from southern rivers and supplying it to the dry North. This massive scheme has already taken 50 years from conception to commencement and is expected to take almost as long to construct. Planned for completion in 2050, it'll eventually divert 44.8 billion cubic meters of water annually to the population centers of the drier north. When finished, the work will link China's four main rivers, the Yangtze, Yellow River, Huaye, and Haiye, which requires the construction of three diversion routes, stretching south to north across the eastern, central, and western parts of the country. The complete project is expected to cost $62 billion, more than twice as much the country's controversial Three Gorges Dam. The Pinglu Canal is one of the three major projects under this initiative. The preparation for the project has been extensive, with survey and design work being carried out for several years. Construction of the Pinglu Canal officially began in March 2022, with the target completion date set for 2026. The average cost per kilometer of the project is estimated to be around 100 million won, approximately 15 million USD. The high cost is attributed to the challenges of constructing such a long canal through the mountainous terrain of western China. Additionally, the project involves the construction of a series of dams, tunnels, and reservoirs, further adding to the overall cost. Despite the high cost, the strategic significance of the Pinglu Canal project makes it a priority for the Chinese government. The purpose and significance of the Pinglu Canal Despite the ambitious plans for the Pinglu Canal, some European engineers have expressed skepticism about the need for such a massive infrastructure project. They argue that the cost of building the canal outweighs its potential benefits that other transportation modes like railways could be just more cost-effective. However, the Chinese government maintains that the construction of the canal aligns with the development needs of the Wangxi province and the demand for foreign trade in that region. The region has had some coal and iron deposits to support moderate industrial development. Coal is mined north of Guilin and south of Lisuao, and around Baise in the west. Iron is mined in the area near Guangdong Hunan border, as well as in the southeastern Wangxi. Other exploited minerals resources include tin, of which Guangxi is a major producer, tungsten, manganese, and antimony. Moderate amounts of bismuth, zinc, hafnium, and lead are also produced. The canal will link the Yangtze River and the Pearl River, two of China's largest waterways, creating a new trade route that'll boost economic growth in the region. Additionally, the cost of shipping via the canal will be lower than that of the railway transportation making it an attractive option for businesses looking to transport goods. Furthermore, Guangxi province is located close to the ocean, which further enhances the canal's potential as a trade route. The canal will also provide significant efficiency gains in the commodity transportation within Guangxi province once it becomes operational. Shipping goods through the canal will be faster and more reliable than using existing transport routes, which will translate it into cost savings for businesses. Overall, while some may question the need for the Pinglu Canal, its construction is justified based on the demand for foreign trade and the benefits that it would provide to the local economy. With the ability to transport goods by waterway, it will reduce the need for railway transportation, which is often slower and more expensive. Moreover, Guangxi province has a high agricultural water demand due to its large agricultural sector, which is the backbone of the region's economy. 
Agriculture is concentrated in the river valleys and on the limestone plains. The hillsides are terraced wherever feasible. Since the 1950s, the government has been bringing new land under cultivation and has increased the yield of already cultivated areas by the use of irrigation and tractors. Major food crops include rice, corn, wheat, and sweet potatoes. The leading commercial crop is sugarcane. Other important commercial crops include peanuts, sesame, rami, Chinese grass, tobacco, tea, cotton, and indigo. Wangxi is also a rich producer of a wide variety of fruits. The canal's construction can provide irrigation during times of drought and support the growth of the agriculture sector in the region. The officials of the Chinese government are very excited about the state of the project. They say that it'll be the first canal connecting the river to the sea to be built in China since the communist takeover in 1949. And the first for transport since the Grand Canal itself. They predict big gains for the economy of Guangxi, which is one of China's poorest provinces. Navigable tributaries of the Xi or West River flow through it, but they move eastward towards the much richer province of Guangdong. The new canal will enable goods in Guangxi to be sent from the Xi River system by waterway directly south to seaports in the same province instead of Guangdong, which would shorten the journey by more than 500 kilometers. The canal will have three chains of locks that will be able to handle vessels of up to 5,000 tons. To allow these to pass, several large bridges will be torn down and rebuilt with higher clearance. About 10,000 villagers along the banks will be moved to newly built settlements, says Kaixin, a magazine. There are officially protected mangroves growing in the area where the canal will meet the sea, but the government insists that the project will not do any serious harm to the environment. A 20-meter wide bridge will be built just to help animals to cross, including civet cats and red-bellied squirrels. The central government sees the Pinglu Canal as the possible start of a much bigger canal building scheme that could unfold in the coming years as China strives to become a transportation power by 2035, a goal declared three years ago. The idea to link up with China's main navigable rivers is relatively new. The idea is that they would connect these navigable rivers, which flow from west to east, with more north to south canals. The Grand Canal connects great rivers in the north, including the Yangtze and the Yellow Rivers. Two new super-long canals, yet to be formally approved, would connect the Yangtze with southern China's Pearl River Basin, which uh, the Sea River flows into. A proposed route for one of them, called the Zhongwei Canal, would include a stretch of waterway that was built 2,200 years ago and hasn't been used for shipping since 1975. In total, the Zhongwei would be about 1,200 kilometers long and provide ready access in the south to the Pinglu Canal. The other new waterway being considered, the Zhengyongwei Canal, would connect with the Grand Central Canal and be even longer, about 1,900 kilometers. State media estimate the total cost to, for the two to be about $65 billion. In conclusion, the Pinglu Canal is a massive infrastructure project that will play a crucial role in the development of the Guangxi province and boost foreign trade in the region. Despite some concerns raised by European engineers, the can canal's strategic significance just can't be ignored. Once operational, the canal will improve commodity transportation efficiency between the Wangxi province, many other provinces. It'll, it'll provide irrigation during drought periods and reduce transportation costs compared to railway transportation. It'll also bring significant economic benefits to the region and China as a whole. We hope that this video has provided valuable insights into the Pinglu Canal project. And that's about it for today. Don't forget to subscribe to The Seeker's Edge. And until next time.